The Bible calls them terrible storms of life. I call them life collapse. Let, let me give you an example. I'm not talking about a chipped tooth. I'm talking about, well, maybe, maybe it's your once a year physical that your, your, your business makes you go see a doctor once a year for a physical. You feel great. He asks how you're doing and you're kind of figuring after physical he's going to say, listen, you're great. Maybe watch the cholesterol or something. But he says, the blood's got an abnormality. Let's do one more test. And next thing you know, you're hearing the word cancer and chemotherapy. Life collapse. You feel like your marriage is fine. And your spouse walks in, not to confess about, about an affair, but to say that, that affair has grown. I'm divorcing you and marrying that other person. Life collapse. You invest in a business and you thought the business would do well and you overextended and the business collapsed and now you don't know if you can even make your house payments and have a roof over your head. Life collapse. Maybe you've never been at these extremes. Maybe you've been close. Maybe there's been a time that your life has collapsed. And you feel like when my life collapsed, Jesus wasn't there. He didn't help. He's a million miles away. When I need him the most, he's the farthest away. The disciples are in a boat on the Sea of Galilee. These, a couple of these guys grew up on that sea. The winds are so bad, the waves are so bad, they're convinced they're going to die. And these are not just rookies. These are experienced fishermen that spent their life on that sea. It's so bad, they're convinced they're going to die, and Jesus is in the boat, and he is asleep. They're going to die, and we got sleeping Jesus. You've been there, haven't you? You're about to die here, and he is not there. What happened on that boat has a lot to help us when we feel like I'm about to die here and he's asleep on me. Next week, the storm and sleeping Jesus, it'll change our lives.